Hello and welcome to my channel. In this channel, we explain various nursing concepts in a simple form for better and easy understanding. These videos could be used by both LPN and RN students as well as nurses who are trying to refresh their basic concepts. My name is Nas Mosh. In this video, we're going to talk about MS, Parkinson's disease, as well as ALS. So, MS. MS is a chronic progressive immune mediated disease of the CNS characterized by patches of demyelation in the brain and the spinal cord in which symptoms occur in relapse and remission type pattern. Exact cause of MS is actually unknown. Some of the causes that they associate with MS include genetic disposition, geographical areas like if you're from Europe, New Zealand, South Australia, Northern US, as well as Southern Canada, if your gender is female, and if you're the age of a young adult between the ages of 20 to 40 years are most probably the people who are normally affected with MS. Some of the signs and symptoms of MS include once an MRI is performed, it shows sclerotic patches through the brain and the spinal cord like white white patches the patient will say or depict fatigue they will have visual disturbances blurry vision diplopia they'll have sp sludge speech they'll have spasticity and weakness of extremities sometimes numbness and pain they will have emotional lab liability like or depression they will have intention tremors as well as spastic bladder. For MS, since there is no cure, we could do management. And the management of this, because since there is no cure, treatment is aimed at relieving the symptoms and decreasing the frequency and severity of the relapse. So during exhibition, we administer corticosteroids, steroid medication as prescribed, and we also teach the patient on stress management techniques to prevent the exhibitions. Right. Immuno disease, we do what? Decrease inflammation with steroids. Some of the interventions that we have with MS patients include, we promote independency and maintaining an active, normal lifestyle as possible. Because remember, this is a young adult between age 20 to 40. They are used to be independent. All of a sudden, you know, they are having spasticity, blood spasticity. They are having weakness. We need to maintain that independency so they feel like they can maintain their lifestyle. We teach them about self-catheterization techniques if needed. We promote daily exercise with full precautions. Remember the muscle, we're starting to lose that muscle, right? We instruct the client to avoid stresses that will cause exhibition of the treatment and as well as infections, right? Ex infections could trigger it as well. And we teach them how to administer Injection, self-injection, if that's one of the treatment plan and prevention of injury because sometimes they'll end up with frequent falls. Some of the medications that we use for MS maintenance include immunosuppressants, which reduce the frequency and duration of the relapse. So there is interferon beta-1, which is an IM injection that is administered weekly. Interferon beta-B, 1B, is subcutaneously administered and then there's the galtiama acid which subcutaneously and it's administered daily so just know the difference and often and route so we're gonna also give them some medication for muscular spasticity and tremors some of them include bacopen gapatin urinary and constipation will give them oxybutin We'll also give them psyllium husk. You know, it's a bulking agent to help them have bowel movements. For depression, we'll give them some antidepressants. For sexually difficulties, we'll give them, you know, Viagra, Cenetophil. And for fatigue, we can give them Modafinil. Modafinil is one of the medications they give. These patients will need a lot of help because there's a change in their normal living lifestyles. So finally, client education on patients with MS include will refer them to various therapies, OTPT, 
and speech therapy. Remember, this is a new change to their norm. So they need to relearn certain things. We'll also teach them uh, proper medication administration techniques like self-injecting and all that. And lastly, we'll teach them how to prevent lapses and self-catheterization if need be. Parkinson's disease. So Parkinson's disease is a chronic progressive neurological disorder caused by loss of pigmented cells of the substantial Niagara and depiction dopamine. So with Parkinson's, there is an issue with dopamine. Signs and symptoms of Parkinson's include drooling and slurred speech. They'll have depression. They'll have a fixed gaze, gaze, like mask-like face. They'll be expressionless, in short. The posturia and gait disturbances, this is patients who are noted to be shuffling. It's a question in NCLEX and you know, most nursing school, they tell you a Pakistanian patient normally shuffles and then they'll have resting tremors as well as bradykinesia with rigidity. Some interventions for these patients include, we'll teach the patient about fall precautions, we'll encourage the patient to increase fiber in their diet to prevent constipation, okay? And we'll encourage the patient to clothing to force that like well if they used to use button clothes will change the buttons to like zippers or you know snaps you know to force the independency because remember they are having changes with muscle tone and everything some medications they'll use for this patient will be like anti-Parkinsonian agents like levodopa will have to give them dopamine agents remember they're low in dopamine right We'll give them anticholinergic agents like benzotropin. We'll give them antiviral agents. And with this antiviral agent like hydrochloride, some side effects include tremor, rigidity, and bradykinesia. Okay. And then we'll give them antihistamines. Some therapeutic measures they use for this patient include like deep brain stimulation, neural transportation, and thalamo. Tommy, and some of the education we need to tell them, okay, as we said, we'll teach them about fall prevention, medication regime, we'll promote adequacy of nutrition and may use supplementation. Remember, you know, we need them to gain that weight, maintain that weight because muscle tone problem we're having. And then we'll form strategies on how to improve their bowel and bladder function because remember with blood and bladder function it causes a lot of issues right if a patient is not going they'll end up with constipation they could end up with infection if the patient is not voiding well their bladder can be distended they can end up with bladder infections a lot of things could be messed up and also we could refer them to various therapy like otpt as well as speech als so als is a progressive invariable fatal neurological disease that attacks the nerve cells which are the neurons that control voluntary muscles it's also known as large ganges disease this disease right is detrimental once you have this disease these it's fatal it will end up killing the patient some signs and symptoms of this disease include fatigue overreactive deep tendon reflexes difficulty chewing and swallowing that is dysphagia they'll have slurred nasal speech with difficulty forming words they'll have twitching cramping and muscle weakness they will experience cognitive impairment some of them and eventually their respiratory will be compromised and death usually occurs from respiratory failure infection or aspiration okay the etiology of ALS is unknown and no cure and to cure no cure for this. So treatments are normally symptomatic. So we treat the symptoms. We don't treat to cure. Some of the interventions we perform, our nursing interventions will provide education, will let the patient know about the disease process, what they should expect. What is going to be their norm? What is their body going to go through? We'll provide information and support and assess the home for support system. We'll implement 
aspiration precaution and altered methods of communication it need be because if they start getting started you don't want them to get frustrated we still need the patient to express themselves so we'll give them alternate modes of communication will support the respiratory functions most of these patients end up on mechanical ventilators or non-invasive pos- positive pressure ventilators like some bipurp will administer medication to provide relief from excessive salivation that's the anticholinergic yeah they dry them up and we provide support services to the client and family with anticipatory grieving because remember this f- disease is fatal it will kill the patients Neuroprotective agents will give them that at early stages and will also manage spasticity with like baclofen or diazepam. Education for these patients will be, of course, as I said, a disease progression and prognosis will complete advanced directive. The disease is fatal. The interventions will be performed to minimize respiratory function and prevent infection. We'll also have a strategies for aspiration to prevent it we'll also have the alternate methods of communication and as well we we'll refer them to various therapy home care and hospice if need be thank you for watching please like share and subscribe to my channel see you on the next one bye